You know, talking to the camera is such a weird thing. I mean, it's like, it doesn't feel like you're talking to another person. I mean, I know you're a person sitting on the other side of the screen, but all I can see here is this strange metal contraption that I'm supposed to be talking to. So it doesn't really have the feeling. So it, it feels more like you're talking to yourself rather than talking to another person. And while I talk to myself all of the time, you know, it usually happens inside of my head. So I don't have to speak it out. And even if I do, I don't have to pay attention to whether I'm pronouncing, whether whatever it is I'm saying is, you know, intelligible to anybody who, you know, happens to overhear it. Which is another thing as well. It makes it exponentially harder to speak coherently into the camera when someone else is around. And I suppose that ties in with the theory that talking to the camera is like talking to yourself. Because when you're monologuing and when you become aware that someone exists that can overhear you talking to yourself, while well, you stop talking to yourself, right? It's embarrassing. This other person doesn't even need to be in the, the same room for me. But just the awareness that someone exists, you know, that can potentially hear you monologuing is enough to give you pause. It's enough to give me pause anyway. There's this guy called Kip Oji-san, who is a Japanese guy, a YouTuber, who is very popular for making vlogs about Singapore lately. And the thing I really admire about him is just his ability to talk to the camera regardless of the circumstance. He can't be just walking, prancing around Chinatown and have a million eyes on him and he'll just pop up his camera and he'll do like a three minute full on monologue without pauses and without cuts and it comes out just brilliantly. I don't know how you do it. I suppose the more you practice, presumably the better you get at it. So I guess that's a work in progress here as well. By the way, this is a poster. It's a free poster that I got from Akihabara back when I was in Japan. It's by an artist named Kantoku. Anyway, I am back in Singapore. This is the room that I'm renting here. And yes, the flight went fine this time. No more weird mishaps. Some footage of that. Take a look. So I was just at church today, and the pastor, in his sermon, I thought made a rather interesting point. He was talking about the COVID virus situation, and how it causes a lot of anxiety among all of us, among the church staff as well. And we tend to ask all these what-if questions. 
What if I become infected? What if my parents or my children become infected? What if the church becomes a viral infection cluster? And his answer to having struggled with all these what-if questions was rather interesting. He said, the answer is even if, even if I become infected, even if my family becomes infected, even if bad things happen in general, things remain. The world continues, God's kingdom and providence carries on, and we continue to both have a place in it and have a role in it. Our duties to God and to our fellow man are not nullified just because a terrible thing has happened. So even if, in contrast with what if, it's a kind of non-self-centered perspective on things, it's, kind, it's a kind of emptying of yourself. The Bible says Christ emptied himself and took on the role of a servant. And so even if bad things happen, our capacity and our duty to serve remains. As Christians, we have a tendency towards a sort of naive form of faith where we might be inclined to answer these what-if questions with it won't, or pray and it won't, or have faith and it won't. But that is just not how things work. You are not owed protection or deliverance. You are not owed healing or any such thing just because you have faith. In fact, the call is for you to have faith even if you are in a bad situation. And that is why a person is called faithful when he discharges his duties, continues to do what he needs to do, continues to serve in the capacity that he knows he should, despite things going wrong, despite being put in a bad situation. Anyway, just thought that was a rather interesting sermon. So another thing that's been going on is that I've been testing out this guy, the camera. So I've been taking night walks around the neighborhood lately, and I've been taking the opportunity to see how this camera does uh, filming at night. So I'm at a point where I think I might be ready to take some footage that I'm willing to edit into a video together. So that will probably come in later because I'm gonna go tonight as well. Another thing I've been looking at is taking time lapses of the night sky. So one of the things that I want to be able to do with this guy is that the next time I go camping, I want to be able to film stars. So that's another thing I'm trying out. I also happen to be in Singapore, which has one of the most light polluted skies in the world. So if it works here, it's gonna work better in the wilderness. Fingers crossed. Okay, we're gonna go make and have dinner, and then we'll go for that walk. Okay, time to go take that walk.
<sighs> Man, it's so balmy even at night. <sighs> Sweating. Anyway, I am done for the day. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again next time.